We are at the beautiful Grand Haven State Park here in Grand Haven, Michigan, right next to Lake Michigan. Turned out to be a beautiful day today. We were expecting rain all day, but it has kind of like cleared up the rain portion anyway. We still got some cloudy skies, but the sun has come out and it's really looking good. We were planning on originally just uh, getting some dinner in town this evening because of the rain, but it looks like it's gonna be in the middle of the night when it comes through. So I decided to do something. We're gonna work on a, uh, a steak on my new Weber grill. This is gonna be kind of like a test because I have not cooked a reverse sear on my, uh, on my one of these little Webers before. So I wanted to go ahead and give it a try and see if we can uh, pull this off. So what I wanna do first is show you the new Weber. I've actually, I had planned on showing this um, during this trip because I bought this one new for the, uh, the big haul and it's an upgrade from my other Smokey Joe. And uh, so I got this for the trip and we've already cooked on it a few times. So it's, it's already getting dirty, but let's go ahead and talk about the uh, benefits of this new Smokey Joe that I got. See, we got a beautiful backdrop with the, uh, the beach behind us there. Really pretty here amongst all the, the sand and uh, Lake Michigan. We've got a pretty nice site here right, right on the end and it being Monday, it's kind of cleared out. So not as many people here, but so I want to show you this. This is the new Weber, the Weber. I believe it's called the premium uh, Smokey Joe. And like I said, I've already used it a few times. We got it kind of ready for this uh, cook that we're going to be doing. But the difference between this one and the other uh, Weber Smokey Joe that I was using is that it did not have a, uh, a lid lock. So this guy right here, it holds it in place, right? Now the first thing, let me just mention this. Once you put it in place right there, and you can actually use this to hold your lid just like that. So that's a, that's a nice benefit of this grill over the original Smoky Joe. So when you wanna look at your food, you can just simply take the lid. Normally you'd take it and you'd set it off somewhere, usually on the ground, right? Uh, so it's nice being able to just take the lid and just stick it right there for whenever you want to flip your feet, uh, flip your food or, or check it or whatever, you know. All right. The other reason why I like this design is that so you can loosen it up. And then once you line the handle up there, you can snap it in place and that holds it together for a nice travel package there. So pretty cool. The other thing that they have done is that they eliminated the bottom damper and they have put them on the sides so on both sides of the grill you have this guy right here so you can adjust that if you want to try to use it for some uh, you know slow cooking adjust it there's a hole there on each side or just go wide open like that that's how I've been using it because I've been just cooking some chicken on it on this trip so you got it on this side as well so there's your adjustment so you no longer have the holes in the bottom of the grill let's go ahead and snap that back in place right there you no longer have the holes in the bottom we gonna move the grate out for the ash to go through so it all just piles up in the bottom and when you're done using it you can go ahead and just uh, dump the ash one more thing i wanted to point out um, this kind of campground right here is one reason why i always carry this tin can bucket with us for our trips is so that i have a place to dump hot ash if the campground doesn't provide a place to do that. You're out here on the sand, you know, this is basically a parking lot that we're in. There's nowhere to dump the ash. So I always travel with that in the truck there so I can dump my hot ash, all right? So I think that was kind of the, uh, the benefits that I wanted to mention for the Weber Smoky Joe Premium. I will say that they did a poor job on the fitment of the grate. You can see it, how it moves there because it's a little bit too small of diameter. They should have made this, you know, at least quarter or three eighths and bigger in diameter so that it would fit that little ridge there more properly. But it's not gonna uh, affect the way the grill works. It's just a little bit of more of annoyance that the grill does not sit flat on that lip down in there. Let's go ahead and uh, get ready for the cook. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna try a reverse sear on this little grill. So what I'm planning on doing, I'm gonna go with eight charcoal briquettes. These are Kingsford that I use. We're gonna get those hot. I'm gonna put them in there just like that. And uh, we will set the steak right in the middle of the grill and cook it slow. 
get it up to about 110 or so, 115 maybe. And then once we do, we'll pull it off and just let it rest, you know. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice full chimney of charcoal blazing, get it hot, pour them in there and smooth them out. And then we will do the reverse sear here. And uh, hopefully that's gonna work out pretty good for today's cook. And we've got some beautiful weather for it here next to Lake Michigan. So I've got the eight charcoal briquettes stacked in the side of the chimney there. We've got one tumbleweed down there. We're gonna light that and put them right over that tumbleweed to get them to lit. Now, is eight, char is eight charcoal briquettes enough for this cook? Actually, I don't know. I'm guessing that eight is gonna be enough just from experience on my PK doing some uh, cooks like this. Uh, you know, we're really kind of looking for that 200 degree, 225 maybe, um, slow, a low temp so that we have a slow cook and get the steak up to a rare internal temp before we do our reverse sear there. So we're gonna try, like we said, four and four, and we'll just play with it. This is gonna be an experiment to see if it works. Right, we got our tumbleweed lit. Trying to just get it over the charcoal. Let those get, let them get hot and then we'll spread them out evenly. All right, so our charcoals are burning in nice. I'm gonna go ahead and get those uh, poured in there and just even them out. We're gonna do four on each side there like I showed you in the beginning. All right, there's our charcoal in there. Hopefully that's gonna provide the right amount of heat. I can feel the heat. It's getting nice and hot. We'll go ahead and put our grate on there and let it start getting uh, preheated. All right, and then we'll bring the steaks out in, or the steak out in a few minutes and get it on there. So this is our steak that we're gonna be cooking. I picked this up from a local Kroger, uh, nothing special about it. It was a, a choice cut, but what we've done is we've seasoned it and I've been using this MF seasoning company. This is the salt blend and this is the pepper blend. Uh, this was given to us by some friends, uh, Blake and Tish, some camping friends of ours. And <clears throat> what's really cool about this is that this was actually purchased from right here in Grand Haven at a little uh, boutique store there in town. And uh, he give it to me whenever we saw them last. They've already burned through theirs. So since we're here in Grand Haven, we're gonna go into town and we're gonna buy a couple extras of these. I'm gonna send him a couple since he's already gone through this, but this is some really good stuff. The MF Seasoning Company blend. So we're using that, came right here from Grand Haven to season our steak. I will say that I added a little bit of garlic on there as well to make it more of an SPG type rub. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let's get the steak on the grill here. So it's gotten nice and hot. The lid is very hot to the touch. You can see our charcoal down in there burning in nicely. I've already brushed the grate. So let's go ahead and get our steak on here and let it start slow cooking. I want it right in the middle of the grill. So hopefully we'll have kind of some even heat there going. And let's go ahead and close that up. We're gonna come right over here to the back of the camper and I'm gonna hit start on my timer so that I can keep up with how long it's actually been on there cooking. Now I do have some temp probes right here. This is the blue dot that I could use, but I'm not gonna mess with any of that. We're gonna keep this as simple as possible. I've actually got what, I, what I'll use. This is my reorganized seasoning area for the back of the camper. We've got all of our rubs in there, all the stuff. This is the stuff I just showed you there. I've also got inside here, all right, my meat, meat thermometers. So this is what I'm gonna use. We'll just uh, go off our time and just kind of check it every so often and uh, see how it's gonna do. Hopefully those eight, those eight charcoal is gonna work pretty good to get it up to our temp without taking too terribly long. It's about 520, so I don't know. I hope that we're gonna be through this part within about an hour, but we'll see. I'm gonna enjoy the, uh, the sights and the beauty here while this thing is cooking. So we've lost all of our sunlight, or of our sunshine anyway, but still beautiful out here, feeling really good. So our ribeye has been on for 30 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna give it a check. Let me go ahead and turn my thermopop on. All right, let's see what our steak looks like. I have not looked at it until right now. Okay, it looks like it's doing really good. You can see that it's cooking in and this is, this is how it should look when you're slow cooking it like this for reverse sear. You don't want it to look uh, like you typically would when you're grilling it over, over direct flame. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of a temp check and see 
where we are. So we're, see, we're almost there. <clears throat> Excuse me. 105 right there. Let's check it right in there. All right, so about 105, 106, is closer to the edge. So we're doing really good. This is actually working out well. Let's go ahead and uh, close it up, keep that heat in there. We're gonna cook it till it gets about 110 to 115. So like I said, we've been on for a half hour. We'll, we'll give it like another 15 minutes and then we'll check it. So we're about 40 minutes in now. I wanna go ahead and check this cause I don't wanna overcook it. We wanna try to keep that medium rare temp as close as we can once we're finished with it. So yeah, there we go, 115. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off. Let's go ahead and got these tongs right here. All right, we're gonna pull that off just like that. Now I'm gonna go wrap this up with some foil, keep some of the heat there on it, but this will be fine to set on your counter like this, uh, you know, an hour or so until you get your uh, charcoal ready. So what we're gonna do is go ahead I'm gonna take that chimney right there. We're gonna fill this thing all the way up with a little bit of extra, get it blazing hot. We want a nice hot fire in here with the charcoal to do our final sear. All right, so we've got our charcoal getting hot. And the reason I'm using the big guy there, so this is, I like using these, the Weber is the large and you have the, the Weber small. I typically use one full of the small Weber charcoal chimneys for this grill when I'm doing some regular grilling, like for chicken, things like that. I wanted extra heat this time, so I wanted more charcoal, but I don't know exactly how much I want. So what I decided to do was use one and a half of the small. So I used this as just like a measuring device, filled it all the way up, kind of over the top there, dump it in there. Then I filled it up about halfway, dump that in there. And then that's what we're using uh, the big chimney for there. So once these get good and hot, we're gonna dump them in there, level them out, get them nice and even, let them get nice and hot before we start doing our sear. All right, so we've got a uh, hot chimney full of charcoal. Let's go ahead and get these guys dumped in here. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and just kind of even them out. So that looks like, this looks like a pretty good amount for what I'm doing. It's a lot of charcoal, but it's worth it for what we're doing here. I just didn't think that the, uh, the single layer of the uh, small basket was gonna be enough because I use that just for kind of, you know, grilling chicken. So we wanted a nice hot charcoal basket here. I'm moving some of these hotter ones over to this side and the colder ones over to the hot side there. Just trying to even it out a little bit. That'll, that'll work pretty good right there. So I can tell we've got a really, really hot charcoal bed right there. So we're gonna roll with that. Go ahead and put the uh, grill grate back on. So we're just gonna use the, uh, the grill grate to come with the grill. We're not gonna worry about our other aluminum grill grates on this. I just want to get it on there and get it seared. So I think that's going to be good. Let this uh, grate get nice and hot and then we'll throw the uh, steak on there. Been enjoy a couple of cold ones, a cold drink anyway. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and oil the steak. We've had it over here resting Take this guy, ball it up, put it in my pocket so it doesn't blow away. So I'm gonna use some grapeseed oil and just brush a little bit on each side. And flip it over, a little bit more of our grapeseed oil. You don't have to use grapeseed oil, but I learned that it works pretty good. So, we are just about ready to set this guy on the little Weber after the noise gets through here. <laughs> Gotta love loud exhaust systems, right? <laughs> All 
All right, everything should be good and hot, ready for this. I'm gonna go ahead and set the, uh, the grate off over here on the table, just so that, I don't know, maybe it'll look a little nicer with the beach behind us there. So that is, that is hot, nice and hot. Can't keep my hand on there, for, but just for a few seconds. So we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you, the camera woman. Abby's helping yeah, me with I'm this. <laughs> I love right. that sound. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good sound. Nice and hot. Start. Almost forgot my timer there. So. All I want to do is just, I'm going to keep flipping this steak every 30 seconds to a minute or so. And uh, we want just a nice sear on both sides there. So even, even cooking on both sides, but do it often. You mean flip it off? Flip it often, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it. That was 30 seconds, so I'm just moving it. We'll go another 30 till I get 60 seconds and we're gonna flip it over. Nope. Flip it, there we go. Oh, it's doing pretty good. I don't know what our neighbors are doing, but it sounds like they're building a deck over there. <laughs> Every day it's hammering. Uh, it's like you're building a deck. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to keep doing what we're doing here. Flames is from the fat dripping off the steak there. We're at two minutes. Let's go ahead and flip it again. Oh, yeah. It's looking pretty good. Ain't gonna take much longer. We're gonna have this guy ready. Oh, you can see. <laughs> oh, you're already filming. <laughs> well, this is how we get there you go. photos. <laughs> so we're at three minutes. Let's go ahead and flip it again. Oh yeah, look at that. That's doing great. That crust. Okay, I need to take a video of this. With okay. The up close. All right. All right. Let me check the other side. See what it looks like. That's looking pretty good right there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to go 30 seconds on that other side about 30 and then we'll go ahead and pull it this is going to be ready to go here all right we got a fresh clean cutting board here look at that yes that's what we want right there all right i think that worked out pretty good the, the little Weber is working great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover this up. We're just going to give it a few minutes to rest. We don't want to cut into it yet. And then we'll uh, give it about 10 minutes or so. We'll cut into it. All right. So our steak has been resting for about 15 minutes now. Look at all the juices running out right there. Yeah, that's a good sign. Foil off here. Oh yeah, still steaming. That looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Abby's having a vegetarian meal tonight. Abby is going to make her a bean burrito tonight, by choice. That's what she wanted, but I had this one steak and I wanted to cook it so. Let's see how it turned. Oh, yeah. 
how it turned out. This is all the ribeye cap right here that I just cut. Just getting into the eye. So, I don't know, maybe it tempted out about medium or so. This part right here looks great. Not only is it delicious, the rain is about, it's about on us. Yeah. It's starting to sprinkle. How is it? It's good. It's good, isn't it? It's delicious. Perfectly salty, like I like a steak. So, meaning that it's been seasoned really well. So, the color on the video probably doesn't come out all that well. I think we ended up finishing out at a really good medium right there. But I tell you what, the steak, I'm gonna have another cut of that. A Kroger steak. Bugs just hit me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> cut a piece of this with the, a little bit more of the fat on it right there. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, it's good. It's delicious. So, you know what? It's starting to rain now. I'm going to go ahead and take this inside. We're going to finish out our meal. But I think our little experiment with the Weber Smoky Joe turned out great. Our eight briquettes worked out pretty good. Next time, I think I'm going to try six instead of eight. Three on each side. Slow it down just a little bit. And then just do that final sear just like we did there. But definitely salted ahead of time like I did there at least four hours but these have been salted, or this one right here has been salted a, uh, a day in advance. So that turned out great. It really is good. I'm not saying that just to say it. It's a delicious steak, and I'm ready to go in and enjoy the rest of it without the rain hitting me. Yeah. <laughs> so this has been pretty good. It's been a good cook here at uh, Grand Haven State Park, and uh, we're going to go back inside because the rain, you can see it right there. It's coming in. What do you say? This has been a success though. It's been really good using the uh, the little Weber. That thing makes a lot of good food. It's it's excellent. It's, it's an awesome little so grill. Good. I've been using the same style of grill for over three years, about three and a half years now, and just trying a couple, you know, new techniques with it. A reverse sear ribeye. And it worked out great. Let's go finish our meal. Okay.